All right, good day everyone. Uh, today we're going to take a look at half toning. Half toning is where you bring in a picture into a spire, um, or you could use VFairF Pro. We're going to show both. Uh, a spire is uh, done with a, a gadget, and uh, when we bring in using VFairF Pro, we're going to use an online uh, tool for that. <clears throat> but half toning is where you bring in an image and the varying scales of uh, darkness or the gray scale is um, sized by varying size of circles or dots. Uh, I think way back to when we had dot matrix printers, uh, something along that line. So um, this is one that I've already brought in uh, where we have just a series of varying size dots that I've used the V carving toolpath for. If we jump over to the 2D, uh, 3D view uh, of the preview, we can see what this looks like. So the idea of this is we drill these varying size dots and in, in holes um, varying widths. After it is cut, you could, uh, you know, spray some paint on it, sit and then sand the surface off, rub some stain in there, the um, stain and wipe it off. The stain would stay into the the, the darker areas um, or toolpath around it, uh, several different ways of uh, toolpathing it. The way we're going to use and show today is only with the V-carve uh, bit. So first we're going to take a look at how we could create a halftone image using V-carve Pro. Even though I'm working in a spire, uh, V-carve Pro uh, functions and works just the same way. Um, this is not using the gadget. Uh, the gadget function, uh, if you've been on the uh, Vectrix website, is only for Aspire. Uh, and the reason for this is for the gadget to work, it is based off of a 3D component that is made from a picture. Um, so first thing we'll do is uh, just going to start here with new. And I'm not going to save these changes. And uh, just entering in the height width, thickness of the material, and so forth, uh, same as you've set up any other material or job. For this one, though, I just want to make mention that I am going to zero to the material surface, because uh, using a V-bit at these varying size holes, the flatness of your board and the accuracy of your Z0 is important. If uh, you zero it down a little bit into the too deep into the material, you, you're not going to get the right size holes. Or if your table isn't quite flat, you're not going to get the right size hole. So all of that is entered in, and we're going to say OK. So at this point, I'm going to jump away from VCarve Pro or Aspire and uh, go to a online with, uh, little wizard. And what I uh, did to find this, I just typed in uh, Google uh, Halftone Online Generator. And uh, the first one that popped up looked like what it was that I was after. So selecting that um, brings a little image here. I'm not quite sure what that even is. But anyway, so uh, it does give us the option to use our own image. So I'm going to say to open an image. And we're going to go with this lion right here. So we'll say open. And there it is brought in. On the right side of this uh, little uh, generator, it gives us some options that we're able to increase the amount of, uh, or decrease the amount of holes uh, in the spacing that we have, or decrease it. So the smaller the space is, the more resolution you're going to pick up in the uh, model. Uh, but the more holes you're going to have to drill, the longer it's going to take. And even though it looks good on screen, it may not look good in the real world on your material. So I uh, want to kind of set the setting to where it's going to you still kind of see the image. And remember, the farther you walk away from it, the more these dots and uh, grayscale are going to blend together. Another thing that this uh, online tool has that is uh, different than what you would get from the Aspire gadget is we have options to uh, how these fits are going to be rotated around. So I'm going to say radial uh, just to see what this does for us. And that brings us, uh, you can see those dots are now in a, uh, a radial type of pattern. So once you get this set the way you would like it, um, you could also uh, change, uh, you know, several different uh, things about this. Once you get it to where you like it, 
you would simply come up to save it and uh, we are able to save and download it as an SVG. We have two options. One is a PNG and then a SVG. The PNG is not going to work for us. Uh, that's a uh, image, a picture image, a raster. Um, so that would be more for used for printing. The um, SVG is a scalable vector graphic. That is something that we can use in vCarve Pro. And uh, there it is, it is downloaded and it has uh, Showing my folder right there is downloaded to my downloads folder. So I'm just going to right click and uh, copy that just to uh, get it into. Um, I don't think we could do this, maybe. Nope, I didn't think so. So I just wanted to get that so where I could do this import vectors. I already have it uh, set here, so I'm just going to right click and paste that here into this folder here. Just to be somewhat organized and uh, keep everything in one place. So I'm going to select that and select to open. And it does take a little bit of time for it to open up. And there we go. So as a vector image, it's looking kind of scary. Uh, you know, we can kind of make out where it is and, and what's going on here. Um, but there's a little bit more uh, to it after we get this drilled out or this tool path, we're going to be able to see it. Now notice I just zoomed in there and deleted a rectangle uh, that we don't want. We only want to be able to select the uh, circles that make up this uh, this drawing or this graphic. A couple things that uh, might even do is, uh, since it is a radial pattern, uh, just draw a circle out and I could remove all of the vectors outside of that circle if I wanted to, um, and only toolpath um, anything that's inside of that. And I'm certain there's a much easier way, and there's probably a gadget out there that does that, and maybe even built into Aspire now, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. So selecting all of those dots, leave that circle, selecting all of the product that was imported with the SVG. I'm going to come over to transform vectors and align to material. That is going to center it into our material. And at this point, yeah, we could add more text or graphics or import it into a sign. Uh, we'll leave that up to you, just showing how to toolpath a product like this now that's been imported. So once uh, we get this, I'm going to select all of the circles straight over to the toolpath tab. And we're going to use the V-Curve toolpath. Even though um, these are made up from circles and all that is going to happen is it is going to drill straight down and straight back up. So you might think that's a drilling toolpath, which it, it could be. Um, but by doing a drilling toolpath, we would need to have several different depths uh, based on the diameter of each of these circles. Where the V-Curve toolpath is uh, going to automatically create the right size hole depth based on the diameter of the hole and the angle of the V-bit selected. So I'm going to go in here, have a 60 degree V-bit. Again, we're not setting any depth. We're going to allow that to happen automatically and come down and click Calculate. It's telling me that I have some overlapping vectors and such. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to see what it looks like first. Go ahead and continue anyway. It is taking a little bit of time. There's a lot of detail and a lot of little holes that are happening there. Um, so we could uh, now see it has brought it in. Um, and it is just uh, one heck of a mess it's looking like, but I'm going to preview, see what this looks like. Uh, so we'll preview all these toolpaths, which is only one. It's not looking too terrible. Uh, we'll fill in this color. And we can see there's some things that didn't quite pick up. So that could be uh, some of the warning that it was telling us about. 
um, or it just could be, well, that's the way it is. Um, but that's uh, really not too bad of a picture or an image there. I uh, did pretty good. To get it a more uh, realistic look, what I did was come over here and uh, you have the material color and set the fill color to be darker, uh, a black, um, something other than the top color to get you a more realistic view of what this is going to look like. If it was the same as the material color, the lighting and everything might not quite get us what we want. We could just quickly look to see as a quick problem solving to see what's happening and why it's not picking that up. Turn on this uh, button right here and here. Yeah, so it's uh, doing some weird things with these overlapping vectors. So we could go in and clean that up uh, by eliminating uh, some of those or doing those ones separately. Uh, take a little time to do that, but uh, it's not it wouldn't be too terrible. Um, or we could see what happens with the automatic uh, generator there. Um, but again, just to quickly show uh, what that is, is we just used our find on the internet for halftone image, imported the image, changed the settings around to get to the image that I liked, uh, what it looked like or, or appearance based on the preview, and then came over and did a download as an SVG file. Came into, again, I'm using Aspire, but VCarve Pro would have worked just the same. Coming into import vectors, which would be that SVG that was uh, brought in. Actually, it was this one here. Um, that was the previous one that I tested. Takes a little time to bring it in, as there are a lot of, a lot of vectors that make this up. Um, so there it is. And at that point, you're ready to toolpath this. And again, a V-carving toolpath is what we would use because it is depth set by the V-bit uh, to where we don't have to use individual bits. Now, if we wanted to, um, we, we could come in and do a pocketing profile cut on the inside of every one of these holes and get the same uh, basic effect. Uh, but then you have to have a fairly small bit uh, end mill to be able to do that. I mean, that hole right there is only 20 thousandths, uh, almost 30 thousandths uh, in diameter. So you'd have to have a bit that is, uh, you know, a 20 thousandths bit to do that. And that would just take a terrible amount of time. Anyway, uh, V-bit is uh, what you want to use. We could uh, just quickly see what a 90 degree V-bit will do. The only difference here um, both will uh, do about the same thing. The, v, the 90 degree V bit just will not be cutting as deep. It's still giving us the same diameter circle that is uh, going to be present, but it is um, not going to be as deep. So some of those smaller diameter holes, your Z0 is going to have to be a little bit more precise. Um, I should not have previewed all. So. So that is uh, the basics of creating a halftone image uh, using VCarve Pro and the online uh, gadget wizard, wizard uh, that we uh, found the halftone uh, half uh, generator on the web. So uh, again, SVG is what you want to download. Now let's take a look at how to use the gadget uh, from when, within Aspire. So if you do not have Aspire, I'm um, sorry. Um, you could always upgrade your VCarve Pro to Aspire and see uh, how that goes. So right now I'm just deleting, and basically undoing everything that we have done. I could have just gone up to File New. It's probably what I should have done because there's some tool paths and such that we're uh, deleting. But anyway, here we are at New. So for the gadget to work, which is found under Gadgets, and then Half Toner. If it is not in your list, you could come down here to click uh, About Gadgets, and then go to the Gadgets ve Vectric. Brings up the website for Vectric, and you will come through here and see all of the gadgets out there. So we're going to do the Gadget Library. And they are all in here. The half toning is going to be in here somewhere. There it is right there. So you would just download that, um, 
click on it to install it or go to the file menu install and once it is installed it will show up under gadgets and then half toner just going to click on that it tells us that no component is selected right i haven't created anything yet so there's two ways of creating a component off of an image um, both are basically the exact same way because we use the same button so the first is we could bring in a image and then come over to the modeling tab and then create a height field um, by the selected model which did what we want it's nothing that we're going to be able to use for an actual three-dimensional carving because this is a very thin model and uh, when this cuts you kind of get a recognition of what it is but you really it's not going to look all that great um, so that is the one way the other way and the better way of importing a picture or getting a model is not importing the picture first just going straight to the modeling tab and since we do not have a picture in aspire already just selecting the create component from selected imported bitmap since we didn't have one importer selected it knows that we didn't and opens up the file explorer for us to be able to select an image so there is the lion selecting open and that just automatically imported that image as a three-dimensional component we could change the size of this now move it into the center and scale that bigger another control that we have is i could crop this down using just drawing a circle out from here with that circle selected going to the modeling tab and clicking clear all the area outside of the selected vector. It's going to yell at me because I didn't select the component as well. And there we go. So now what the half toner gadget does and what we have to do first is select the component um, that we are using. Going to gadgets, half toner, and the maximum hole radius, the smaller this number is the more higher resolution that we're going to get. Uh, we could also uh, rotate uh, on an angle, similar to what we uh, saw with the uh, online generator with it being radial. Uh, this is only going to raster uh, the holes, but we were able to set the raster angle. Right now I have it set to 60. The retract height in the Z, you don't want it to retract high. Um, it's just a lot of holes that we're going to be drilling. The higher we move up out of the material is wasted time because we're not actually cutting the material. So just high enough to clear the material surface and uh, be able to move to its next hole position and move back down. may even want to think about reducing that sum down to maybe a sixteenth of an inch my double decimal that I entered in there selecting a tool for this we're going to use that same 60 degree v bit we'll select and then we'll say okay so notice I didn't do anything with the toolpath over here the gadget automatically created the toolpath which is a very similar toolpath that was created with the um, online um, generated one it's just a drilling file of varying depths using a v-bit that is going to get us several different size diameter holes so when we go to preview what this looks like reset our old image and preview so that is a uh, you know possibly a cleaner image uh, because uh, it did uh, pick up and didn't overlap the holes and got everything that we had um, that we will use the fill color here to be able to fill that in and see what it looks like if we had uh, you know painted some stain on it and wipe that down I want to also point out if your 3d previewer is not getting the resolution or the clarity that you would like you can go into the tool paths 
and do the simulation quality. Right now I have it set to the maximum, which does take a little bit longer time to generate if you notice that you might be looking at like, why is that computer taking so long to uh, generate some of this, this toolpath and the previewing? It's because I have it set to the maximum. Uh, standard is what uh, most people have it set to. Uh, so we'll just see if this looks different. Yeah, we can see there is a uh, quality difference uh, there with the way these uh, resolution looks in. So just see that again, the quality difference. Going to tool paths, the preview simulation quality, maximum slower, and preview all those tool paths. And you see at that same zoom level, we actually get circles um, in here and not that uh, distorted look. So it does take a little bit longer to generate that preview and uh, get it laid out, but it does give a uh, cleaner look and a more realistic look of what you're actually going to get. So again, quickly uh, process what we just did. Undo and delete everything that is here. I came into the Aspire modeling tab, came into create a component from a imported picture, grabbed that picture, moved it into the center, scaled it a little bit bigger, came to the drawing side to use the circle, creating a circle to be able to have that cropped down to the size that I would like to have, going back to the modeling tab, creating the clear outside, selecting that component, going to the gadgets, gadget half toner, specifying everything that we want using a 60 degree B bit, selecting OK, going to the preview tab to preview what this is going to look like. And there we go. All right, well, I hope that has, uh, hope everybody has gotten something out of this. It's uh, fairly fun. Uh, we'll do another video on uh, how to uh, create a lithophane and then also take a look at the photo V carve. Uh, but for now, that is all about half toning and uh, have fun, enjoy.